All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome back to another episode of Valued Pursuit. My name is Patrick Davitt, and I'm here with my co-host, uh, Tyler Stegman. What's going on, everybody? You? Good, man. How are you? Wonderful. We have our uh, first guest on today. Super excited. Someone who is a close friend of mine. I've known him for quite a while. Uh, Joseph Rendina. He's the chief executive officer of Iron Health Physical Therapy out of Westchester, New York. Uh, I do know a lot about Joe, so I'm going to try and refrain from doing too much of a thorough introduction. I'll let him take it away as well. But Joe has uh, three different clinics, uh, the first one in Briarcliff Manor, Ardsley, New York, and Peekskill, New York as well. And he's uh, very soon going to be opening his fourth in Stanford, Connecticut, which is super excited. Um, that's in February, I think. Isn't that right, Joe? I was talking to Maria the other day about that. Yeah, it's first week of February is the official start date. You know, with any new clinic, it's a trickle in, takes a little time to get it busy, but we're excited about it for sure. That's awesome, man. Yeah, no, so uh, we're just basically going to go through a little bit about Joe's backstory, basically how he got to where he is now, and uh, ask him some questions on his pursuit of value through essentially in uh, present day. So, Joe, first question for you Who's Joseph Rendina? Let you take that away. Who's Joseph? Well, firstly, thank you guys for having me on. This is this is cool, and I think it's important to do more things like this that are education based. Both you know, both you guys being in the health and wellness, like it, the field needs more of us out there. There's not enough of us, and I'm excited to, to be doing this. But let's go back to that question: Who's Joseph or Indina? You know, I I would say I'm still self exploring that, right? Like I wouldn't be able to define myself on anything particular. Um, as far as what defines me, like I, I live my life by values. So I would say what really is my guiding light is value-based living, right? So honesty, having integrity, love, driven, achievement. You know, these are big things to me that I have guiding lights. So, that, so I, I couldn't define myself more than that. And I would say like, I have a value system that really is what defines me or defines my life and my life kind of path. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I definitely want to get a little bit into your backstory. We're going to ask some more cool questions, deeper questions like that. But like I said, I do know a lot about you. So you went to just talk a little bit about like your education, kind of your upbringing, kind of how you got to where you are now. Um, and kind of, I guess, also like why you got into the physical therapy field, because you are a doctor of physical therapy as well. So yeah, yeah give, sure. So my, go ahead. No, I was going to say, give us, give us, I loved what you said. Thanks for coming on. Give us that brief synopsis of here's who I am from the beginning up till now. Backstory. Like my origins, my origin, Your origin story. story. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. So I grew up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn born, uh, born and bred. That's that's my hometown. I hold strong to that area. I'm no longer there. But when I was a kid, you know, we, I always knew since a young age that I either wanted to start a business or do something in the business world. I was one of these people, you know, how you hear entrepreneurs that are selling things when they're real young or doing these little kind of side projects. I was working at 14. Before that, I was trying to sell like Pokemon cards and wrestlers and stuff like that. And that really is what started my journey into where I am now. I would say from growing up in Brooklyn all the way to college was really a big transition period, right? Like I come from an Italian household, Italian family. Your mom does everything for you. So there was a lot of dependency there. And you don't even know what you don't know until you until you really fly out of the nest, right? So went lived in Brooklyn. When I was coming up through high school, I actually had a couple injuries. And my PT, who I've had a great relationship with, he also came and he was our athletic trainer for our football team. So he would do taping, he would do everything. So I had a really good relationship with him. But what really was a deciding factor for me when I knew that like, all right, PT is going to be the field that I'm going to was in high school, I tore my ACL. So I'm going to rehab after that. And this is right before I go to college. And I was, I was pretty much lined up to play football in college as well. So in high school, I tore my ACL, 
I'm going to rehab. I remember the first day, you know, young high school kid. I'm like, shit, my, my career's done. I, it is what it is. And I remember going to PT and then the PT really just being a support system for me to say, hey, this is where you are now. This is not where you're going to be. And that really was super valuable to me. And I was like, holy crap, I can do this. Because I remember going to my surgeon and him not even caring, right? And, and I don't want to bash every surgeon, but a lot of them just say, hey, my scar, my scar looks good. You're good. Like, what, what is that crap? So the PT was really able to get me from walking on crutches to running to back to playing football ultimately in college. And I was like, damn, I could do this. So I knew from college right away that I wanted to be a PT. Now, you know, college, again, like I said, it's the first time I'm really leaving my family, flying out of the nest. For me, super studious, was a bio major through college, you know, went, went to that and then was applying to graduate school right after that. And it was just kind of all said and done from there. Now, again, I had to relearn that entrepreneurial spirit in me because a lot of things and a lot of issues with, um, with some formalized, formalized school or being in school for so long, it's really not conducive to entrepreneurship. So for me, it was like relearning that I wasn't happy for my first two years out of my career. And it really was because I had to be my own boss and be a business owner. Um, and that really is what facilitated me growing Iron Health to what it is now. Man, that, fantastic. There's so many things as Tyler and I do this podcast with just him and I, there's so many questions and things where we can go. But one, a, a few of the things that really spoke to me was the concept of values, the concept of you can't really define yourself. So I wrote down life. You shouldn't need to, at, at certain points. And that's why we have someone on like you and we love hearing from your life experience and your expertise and your, your vantage point. It's you shouldn't need to define yourself because life's going to define you. It's going to test you. It's going to challenge you. And obviously it did. And I like to think I have a similar mindset and I, I tell my students, I tell others similarly that, if I had, if I got injured, you know, if you should be your biggest cheerleader, you should be your biggest fan. And if you go to someone who's trying to help you recover and rehab and things like that and get back to your old self, I don't want to go to someone who's just going to say, your scars healed. I removed the tissue. I put things back together. You're good to go. No, I want to pick up a boulder. I want to dig out the biggest stump in my yard and be able to do that for the next 20 years, things like that. So it's awesome to hear that mindset because I think that's a big part of what's missing. And then from there, a big thing I was really interested in is you talked about entrepreneurship where it's, I mean, I'm a college professor and, and I was in college for 12 years. You don't hear that often where entrepreneurship and here's what it takes and things like that. So what was it that really got you to get back in? What was it? Two things. One, what got you to have the mindset of, I want to be an entrepreneur, you know, and it's hard to describe. It's one of those things I did a post the other day where it's some things you just can't, you can't define, you have to feel them. But if you can try and define that feeling and then where, what, what did you actually pursue? Like where, how did you learn about entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I would, I would start with going back to who i was as a kid i was definitely had that in me forever so this this is like a, a question too right like are people are great leaders or great entrepreneurs born or they or can you can you become it and you know i i think about that a lot and i do think a part of it is you're, you're born like the true the you know like an elon musk or someone at the top top like these guys are born that way you know so there it doesn't mean that you can't learn and become a business owner or an entrepreneur, but there is a caliber of like something, whatever you believe in your faith, your, your, whatever is giving to you, there's something that you're born with. So I would say I, at a young age, I knew I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. It, it was something like, Oh, business just makes sense to me. Like, you know, I can make my own money and do my own thing. Like that just makes sense. And as I was going through school and this is my experience and it's, it's not everyone that was kind of 
that was kind of pushed down in me. You know, it, it was it was the hey, you got to learn this, you got to do this, you got to follow these rules, you got to do that. So it's so a, a lot of things is really sadly is people who are less agreeable, right, or they don't follow rules. So sometimes that goes hand in hand with business owners because as a business owner, you have to be extremely risk tolerant. So that's that's a big thing. So as I was going through school, whatever, I come out of school, what really facilitated me to say, you know what, I got to do this on my own was a calling one. Like I knew that was my purpose. You know, that was really, really, that's my purpose. That's who I am. Uh, going back to definition definitions, like I'm meant to be a, a business owner, to give people jobs, to support a team, to, to have great staff, a great community. That's, that's just who I'm meant to be. And I, and I'm living my purpose, right? So understanding your purpose is so important, regardless of what you do. Not everyone needs to be a business owner, but like knowing what your purpose is. And two, it was when I was working for someone, regardless of how much money I was making, I just wasn't happy. So like, why, why waste time being somewhere that you're not happy? Like, I'd rather just try to start something, even if I just get by, than work for someone and not be happy and just, just really get my happiness. Because in the grand scheme of things, right? Like life is really short. Like time goes by like this. I, I reflect on like my years and I'm like, holy crap, like days turn into to weeks, weeks turn to months, months turn to years. And then the blink of an eye, you're in your thirties, you know? So it's, it's, it's wild in, in that sense. So really the purpose is everything uh, to me. You got to find a purpose in your life and it has to, it has to just move you forward because if not, you're just going to be in a stagnant spot, right? That's that's really my philosophy there. Yeah. So so how with that, let's let's then spring forward that purpose. Obviously you found a purpose and that purpose eventually turned into iron health. So tell us about iron health. Where did that come from? It's I I was reviewing and reading all about iron and it's the most stable element in the entire unit and it there's so many cool things, but where did that come from? Iron Health. What? How did that purpose come to be for you? Yeah. So the name of Iron Health is funny because it, it wasn't. I wasn't looking too deep into it. Like what? That's just that's just a, a coincidence. That that, that's out, just you know? my brain, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I was, you know, I knew um, Iron Health for me. Like before we dive into the specifics of it, like you know, talking about purpose is definitely. And this goes into definition too, and I think this is important to highlight. Like, iron health and my what I do doesn't define who I am. You know what I mean? Like, that's I think that's an important thing too. Like, it's a part of my life. It's not and not like I obviously invest so much time and so much energy into it, and I freaking love it. But it's a part of my life. It's not going to be the end all be all. And eventually, I will move on to something else too. That's it's just a tool, it but exactly, it's a tool, and it's also like it allows me to be creative because in the end of the day, I want to be creating things. That's fun for me. So that's, that's really the the caliber of it. We can dive into like, Hey, so, you know, a lot of people become PTs, right. And like, that's it. They're a PT and they, they can't be anything else. And I think that's a little bit of a, um, a, a hindering mindset as well. But so the name iron health, like I get obsessive, uh, extremely obsessive when I knew I wanted to open a physical therapy company, I knew one thing for sure that, and this goes back to PTs really pushing the vision 2020, right? We're doctors now, we have all this crap. Like no one's gonna advocate for us better than ourselves, okay? So one thing I wanted to make sure was, one, I didn't put physical therapy in the name because there's, there's, a, there's a connotation with physical therapy. People think physical therapy, they think rugs, in a clinic with curtains and tables and there's a very there's a very misconception what physical therapy is and then also when you put physical therapy on the name you're you're lin you're hindered on what you can do so i was like i don't want to just be a physical therapy company i want to make sure we're putting something in there that allows us to broaden our spectrum of services and and what we can offer people so health was like i gotta have something with help in it that's that was one thing i knew it has to be all-encompassing because one PTs, we're going to be in reality for the muscular skeletal. We are the best in the in in the field, honestly. Like I've had orthopedic surgeons that like we can call diagnosis before them. That's just the way it is. We have so many hands and body pattern recognition, so that has to facilitate from us. And then two, as as you have a business that's not traditional PT, 
you have to have other services that allow you to survive because if you're just traditional PT, it's really a hard world, man. I mean, look at the medical field in general, everyone's buying everybody. So if, if you're not going to be giving other services to people, you're going to put yourself in a box and then one, you got to sell or two, you got to, you have to go and give up quality care or something like that. So I knew that was, that had to be in the name. And then honestly, iron came from sleepless nights, just brainstorming. I would be laying in my bed and just, I would just match things up to help and see what flew, what went. Um, I like marketing, you know, so I knew that it had to be something that was very solid, very fluid that people can digest and it can really create a brand. So that's when iron health hit, I was like, that's it. I knew it. Go ahead, Tyler. I know you got a burning question. I kind of want to go back to that because like for me, so I've known Joe since, all right. So like most people that watch this that are local will know that Joe and I, Joe basically and I started this together. Joe had the idea. I met Joe through a back injury, basically how I got into PT too. Um, and through word of mouth, went to him for treatment. He was in like a hole in the wall in Briarcliff, you know, uh, personal training, uh, retired bodybuilders gym, just grinding with his own treatment table. And that's kind of like what I want to go into, um, you know, those days, like back before this all was where it is now. And like, you had this, you know, like people look at this, everyone sees the end result, right? So they see your, you got a nice website. Now you got three different clinics. You're coming out with the fourth place. You have your own brand. You have all these people that are working under you. Like take us back to those days where you had your own treatment table. You were doing your own scheduling, your own marketing. You had to take care of yourself. Like what about the days where I'm sure we all have it. You know, your mind comes in, your subconscious, maybe you have some doubt and you're like, mm, maybe I should go back and have more of a stable job. Maybe I should go back to working where I was before, where as a manager, maybe what if this doesn't work? Like what kept you going? You know, what kept you on track to get to where you are now, basically? Yeah. So a, a like a couple things come to mind. One is you have to be, all in you know like the, the they say the best way to get to the other side is take a boat and then burn the boat you have no other option you know and and that's kind of what i did so that was one thing that i really embodied to say like i'm going for this right that's gonna it, it's either gonna happen or not and guess what like if it doesn't happen what's your backup PTs are always hiring, man. It's like in the medical field, you can always find a job. So there is a, there is somewhat of a security blanket there um, that was was blaring, you know. And going back to like risk tolerant too, I'm very risk tolerant. You know, I've always have been. I think it's a, anyone who's at the helm of any company has to be. You have to take calculated risk because someone's got to do it. Someone has to be the pioneer. Someone has to be pushing forward. So that that was something that. I've always been able to embody the second part I would say really is like you said, having like people see what, what I built now, but those beginning days, I knew I had this visualization in my head of what it's going to be become like, and, and we're, we're, I'm just touching the surface. Right. So when I was starting, I said, I know what this is going to be. And I just kept putting that into my brain. So I'm filling my brain with this imagination, this, this visualization, this, this concept of what iron health is going to be funny story on that too, actually. So in Briarcliff right now, where the space we're located, when I was building up that clinic, renting a, a, a space, a table in a, in a gym, the space where we're located right now was vacant. And I almost jumped into there. And I remember this is when I started like some visualization, some deep meditation. I had visualizations of having iron health in that space back then. And then like, like I reflected on this last like couple of weeks or when we were moving in, I was like, damn, I visualized this shit and now it's here. So like to, to live that, I'm like, that's, that's wild. So you're, you're filling your brain and this is like science-based too, right? Like neurology, you're the, 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 the science of visualization and meditation is so powerful because your brain doesn't know the difference between actual anxiety and like creating anxiety in your head. So you could program that for success too. My brain doesn't know the difference between success and actual success. So like, why won't I feed it shit? That's going to be like, Hey, this is where you're going to be, you know? So it's consistent, consistent neural reprogramming to, to get to that point. 
Yeah, th- that makes me think there's a couple different things, but one, I, I, one of my favorite uh, speakers that I listen to is Jim Rohn. And he has this whole thing where he says, can you finish something before you start? And he said, the answer is yes. He said, I, if you walk up to a guy on the road and he's just stacking bricks and you ask him, Hey, what are you doing? And he says, I don't know. He's like, we'll take you away to a safe place. You know, the <laughs> concept is you should be able to see it. Like you shouldn't start until you saw it. So I, I think that's so powerful to, have that i mean it's it, it, that that has nothing to do with mindset but it's it's sort of this concept of vision and you know thoughtfulness and contemplation and yeah casting a vision is so important like having a vision and being able to cast it is 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 a skill you know and the more i do this too the more i realize like as i as my company grows and as i grow as a person like those are two things that need to, I consistently have to get better at, like being able to cast a vision and then making sure my communication skills are top notch because those those are really what keeps driving the needle forward and, and pushing forward. But yeah, I love Jim Rohn too. He's, he's I was listening to a, a lecture of him the other day. He's amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it's unreal. So real quick, I know Tyler wants to jump. The, that moving forward, because this is a big one where everyone that I hear that talks about the cool thing that I think we get to when you get to a certain point is the number one message that I that really resonates with me is it's not what you get. It's what you become in the process. You know, Bruce Lee said, you know, there are no there are no limits. There are no end goals. There are only plateaus. So the concept would then, hey, you're opening. You had three clinics why are you opening a fourth why are you continually you know pursuing that fourth uh, for me it makes me think and i want to hear what you of well it's not just what you get from the cl- it's it's the it's the continual pursuit of you know a better version of you and helping more people and things like that but what do you think about that like why keep yeah, going yeah for sure yeah i i i think there's a couple parts to that, right? Like one is my vision for Iron Health is to really grow it to at least 10 to 11 clinics. This is my new vision. So I'm just already tying that up. Um, the second is, and Ed Milet says this, he says, I'm, I'm addicted to the expansion of who I am, of my being. And like, I, for me, I'm like, damn, that's super, super valuable. Like, I never want to stop. I never want to stop growing. I never want to get stagnant. It's in for me the 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 most reward is when i'm learning something new or doing something or uh achieving putting in the grunt work i get so much reward in that and and like you're saying with like bruce lean and stuff i'm actually trying to addict my my mind to the, the process rather than the end result because that's when it, when it comes and then really i have some amazing amazing people on my team and as a unit, we want to help change the face of PT and healthcare, right? Like we're trying, we're trying to do it. And for me to, for, for us to do that, I need to get amazing people and then I need to keep them. And the way you keep them is you make sure they have skin in the game. So the only way for us to keep, to keep doing that is I have to open a clinic, put a manager in there who has pretty much ownership of that clinic so that they could keep driving it forward as well, right? Like if you want to, if you want to shift, you got to do it. If you want to shift a, a disrupted industry, you can't do it as an individual and you can't do what everyone else is doing. You got to do it a completely different way. So that's really what, what what's driving me forward. And it's fun. I just have fun. Drives my wife crazy, but it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> I, I have kind of a bunch of questions, but we, Pat and I talked, I think on the, two episodes ago we had like a valued habits or maybe it was the last one episode three and we talked about like you know obviously um having like your affirmations rituals things that you do on a daily basis like writing stuff down like a calendar to stay organized but then having like a vision board too and you talked about how you had the vision before it occurred um with the prior prior cliff location so is that something that like kind of helped you upscale from the treatment table to the like four clinics at this point like take us through like your maybe if not daily but like weekly basis like are you writing stuff down to like hold yourself accountable do you have like a a vision board or like a vision book or something like how how do you stay organized with that and like how do you how do you hold yourself accountable to like you said like where you want to be like where you are right now basically like for the next like five years down the road like to get to the 10 or 11 clinics like what are you going to do 
to kind of stay organized to make sure that you end up at that destination. Mm -hmm. So every year for me, it, it changes on, on the flow of things because I'm just trying to learn what works. And it's just like in the company, right? Like everything shifts. But the last, I would say, three or four years at the, the end of the year, the beginning of the next year, my wife and, and I sit down for a weekend, we go away and we plan for that year. And we have like, I have an intense planning session. So it's almost two days. And in reality, there's a couple things there that we really do. And there's still things that I, I would like to add on. But one thing I do is I write a three year letter to myself. So that's kind of like a, a vision board as well. Like I'm writing a letter from my, from my future self from three years ago. And I'm saying, and I'm hitting categories in my life. So I'll hit like, where are you with your family? Where are you financially? Where are you with your freedom? Uh, where are you with your friendship? Like it's it's like four or five Fs. Where are you with your faith? Where are you with with your fitness? And I hit those things in the three years to myself. And I what I like to do is I think about a goal, and then I extend it. Like so, I'll be like, okay, maybe with maybe with my health, I want to be at this weight and at this belt in jujitsu. And then I extend it to the next level. So then I'm just push. I'm, I'm just pushing the goalpost out a little further. From that letter, we then go in and we we go together. Like, all right, what are our big goals for the year? What's our big overlying goals? And it shifts every year. Like I've I've done things where it's like intense amount of goals. This year, I actually we actually structured it where it was like, okay, we're gonna have big goals, but we're actually gonna break it down to habit tracking because I think that's more important. So like, if, let's say let's say our my goal is to let's use fitness again. Like if I want to lose like 20 pounds by the end of the year, it's like, okay, what are the habits I need to, to implement instead of like getting crazy and thinking about, all right, I need, I need to track my weight and just see that. It's like, no, what are my habits? I need to work out every day. I need to make sure my diet's on point. Like, so I'm just trying to, to create habits that are going to bring me to the goal for the year. And then I'll also, we'll also ask the question like, Hey, um, and a lot of times what we do is like, what's your five-year goal? What's your one-year goal? And then the next question would be, what can you do this year that makes your five-year goal happen in one year? So you're, st you're stimulating your brain for these things. So that's a big aspect of that. And then from there, it's all about tracking. Like I have weekly check-ins with myself. Like I have a, a Google sheet where I'm tracking, did I do this? Did I do that? Did I do this? And then that's where I'm seeing what's flowing from there. Um, but again, this is a, a new flow for the year for us. So it changes really every year, but that's, that's a big thing. I don't have a specific vision board. She created one. I want to create one. I just haven't got to it. You know, I'm, I am a visual, visual person. So I see in, in pictures, so it's, it's more for my brain, but it'd be cool to actually have one of those too. That's awesome. That's almost like Pat has read uh, Atomic Habits. And I know I was telling you about it too from James Clear, but you talked about like the habit stacking essentially is what you're doing. And also like the identity based habits too. Like if you want to become something, you have to basically do the things that that person would do. Basically what you're doing in business too, right? Like <laughs> you're, you're exactly you're, yeah. like undergrad. Like if you thought that where you're at now as a CEO of like a successful company, you did all the things that that person would do to get to this point. So makes sense. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a good, I think it's a good, I think it's a good question too. Because I'm I'm listening to that book now too. It's the identity based ones is get good questions to always check yourself on. Like, hey, what would this person do in this situation? And what I'm noticing too, the more I go through this, like you're for the longest time, you always feel like people are ahead of you or above you and stuff like that. And like that's such a bad habit too. Because then you deep like, yeah, you have to learn and you have to do stuff, but like not everyone is is driven and just because someone is financially further than you or years ahead of you doesn't mean shit like if, if you're more driven and more focused on self-growth you just gotta like you gotta believe in yourself and like for me that's been a big thing for, for the, this last year too is like i just gotta believe in myself i proved it i have to just consistently bet on myself you know i have one more pat real quick before you i saw anyone to ask him something we talked about like david goggins you know him <clears throat> He was on Rogan yeah, not too long ago, and he said, I think one thing that really resonated with Pat and me was the whole, like, concept of failure. Everyone talks about failing, and, like, you talked about, like, calculated risks and, like, you know, being able to deal with that as a business owner is a huge thing. He talks about failures being attempts and how, like, in the rehab world for both of us, that's that we can, like, kind of think of that, like, for somebody who can't walk, 
working on their gait patterning, you know, just doing like a step forward, back, whatever, and then getting them into like a full gait cycle and be able to walk again. They weren't all failures when they weren't able to walk successfully. They were all attempts. So was there a time in your life where that changed for you? Maybe it wasn't ever like, as you saw it, like, oh, I could fail or, you know, if I don't do this right, it's seen as a failure. And like, it was always like attempts for you, like subsequent attempts to basically get to like the point where you're going to reach your goal and then set a new goal. Like you said, stack that habit and basically be able to get to like the next point, like just to keep you going. Like, did you ever have like the point where you feared of like not doing it the right way and it's seen as a failure versus like, I basically it being as like an attempt, I guess, like, do you live like that? Like things are attempts versus like failures. Like, was there ever a pivotal moment in your life? Yeah. Where you- where you just always like that. So when I ref- if, if I was to really reflect on that, my my mindset is more like when I, my last job where I was working, I just wasn't happy. Like I said before, like so we'll, I'd rather try and see what happens than not be happy. So I'm always going to go that path. And so that's kind of how I frame it in my head. Like I'm just going to keep trying and see what happens. And like if this makes me happy, I'm going to do it. And Am I going to still have a check and balance to make sure that I'm okay, that I'm good? You know, like, so yeah, totally. I think attempts is, is a fantastic way to look at that because what's the alternative, right? Like you're just going to sit around and if you're not attempting, you're not pushing it. You're just going to become miserable. Honestly, that's what happens. That happens yeah. with, well, with so many people. And cause you can't let fear hinder you. Like it, it's, you know, you have to eventually take the leap you know, and, and, and build in the air and see what happens. Like it just, what are you going to do? Like, I'm still learning to the day. I tell my team all the time, like, I don't know what's happening. I'm making shit up and seeing what happens. Like I'm trying to program them that way too. Like we're just seeing what happens and we can adjust on the fly. Like we'll, we'll be okay. You know, there's a, a Tyler knows I'm a great quote, quote, quote. There's so many quotes that I wrote. Uh, <laughs> there's a really good quote where you said, burn the ships. Uh, it says, I, I can't, it wasn't Aristotle. Uh, it says if the only way to see, if you want to see new horizons, you have to have the courage and be willing to lose sight of the shore. You know, at some point you have to take that leap of faith and, you know, enter that, that darkness and things like that. And that makes me think of what you said, where uh, you talked about being unhappy and something that I've been struggling with lately is I've come to a point where I'm not pursuing happiness per se, because you can't always have it. And if that's the only thing that I'm, but you talked about that. So I'm curious why. And then I, I'd written down, I talked yesterday in class about everyone is going into PT. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the, I teach in exercise physiology. So I have a lot of PT majors. They're going into nursing, everyone. And I asked the question, everyone who's going in this class, who's going to go and pursue a career you're all pursuing something that is related to people. What do you, what's your main goal? And ultimately I get them to say, well, we want to improve their health. Okay. Other classes, what does health mean? We want to get them to change. So then I talk about, that's like a big thing with me and it's, I'm waiting for someone to give me a third. Cause right now I say, there's only two ways that you can change. You know, and Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. If you want to know the next five years of your life and you don't change anything, it's like, well, they're going to look like the last five. So the only two ways to change is your mindset and your environment. So I'm curious then, what was it about, you said, oh, I didn't like that job. It was, it, I was unhappy, things like that. What was it about that job that, I use the word fulfillment, meaning, you, you talked about purpose a ton today. What was it? And then from a mindset, what is it about your environment and maybe give some recommendations or or insights on, hey, how should you pursue different environments and things like that? It's a struggle because you can't always choose the perfect environment. You can choose the mindset. It may be harder in certain environments, things like that. So what, what, do, you, hmm. what do you think about all that stuff? And where, where, where did you come from and things like that? Yeah, I, I think, for, think for me, it's it's a... The, the on being unhappy was really be, it's a, it's a tough one because I was really purpose driven right like I like I said I was meant to be a business owner so I had a calling to be out of there so th- it could have been the best job in the world and I still probably would have been unhappy right so that that's that's the reality of it it's so I would say making sure you know what your purpose is and don't lose sight of that because even talking with about PTs right like 
I've seen this so many times in my career, and I'm sure you've seen PTs. You guys both know PTs who get burned out, who are in these clinics that are extremely, extremely profit driven, that only care about the bottom line, and they lose sight. There's no longer about helping people. It's about all right. I'm just. This is just my job, and that's something that is like a virus that you have to freaking extract from your being. If that's unless that's what you want to do, you know. Sometimes people life change. Some, you know, not everyone's going to have passion and drive and and focus. Some people want comfortability, right? So, understanding your purpose, and if if, if people are saying they truly want to help people, they have to go to a, a place that truly helps people. Um, that's that's the that's my answer to the to that part. the The second part was environment, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah. So. <clears throat> As I get older, and it's probably, I probably come off to like I'm an asshole to some people, but my time is extremely valuable, right? I audit my time regularly. And if I'm spending any time with people I do not like, I will make it known and I will cut that time out because it's it, it, like, what are you, what are you doing? What do you, you have to, you have to value your time more than you value anything. If time is like so precious that if you're spending time with people who are negative, you're going to be negative. That's just the way it is. So you have to audit your mind and audit what's going on around you and understand how people talk, how they react. And if you truly want to live like a positive life and be better, you, you have to go and seek those people. So for me, one thing I did the last year and a half was really, um, especially with social media now, you can find all these groups, these masterminds, like even like this, this podcast, right? Like we're all, we all want to be, have better mindset. Like just finding people who are going to be aligned with that, aligned with the goals. There's a group for everything. So if you find, if you like freaking flying kites, you could find a group that flies kites and you know, you're going to have something in, po- in common. And if it's ran by someone who has a positive mindset, you know, it's going to be very positive for your, for your mental health. Right. So for me, it's been finding groups, business groups, uh, even physical therapy owner groups and really leveraging those to find people that are going to help take me to the next level. So that's, that's an important aspect. I was never super social. Now I'm like, okay, maybe I actually need more people in my life who are going to be pushing me forward. Like I want to see someone who's 20 steps ahead of me and I want to get to know how they got there because if they got there, it's possible for me to get there. So it's, it's like just surrounding yourself. You have to be very active in, in pursuing that, I think. Man. So one of the things would be to think in that, in that way is so hard. So we're all out in the professional world. You both were PT students. I on a daily basis, I advise, I teach, I talk to PT students, nursing students, and it doesn't matter. You can, the cool thing is you can replace, we can get in, we'll get into it in a second, like PT specific certain things, but this whole concept is, it deals with people. If your profession deals with people and it doesn't even have to be for health, but if it's for health, what, what would you say to those individuals who are in the process, this, you know, who are students, whether they're in the undergrad getting prerequisites and they're about to go into PT school or they're in PT school and, you know, the grind there is graduate school is just a totally different world. Like that becomes who you are because you're in the trenches and there's so much information and knowledge and understanding and things like that. How would you get those individuals? Because you did it certain people do it, but if you could then help others do it, what would you say to them to get them to, to to, to stay the course of the course that they know they want to follow as bumpy, as treacherous, as dark, as sad, all of those things. I, I, I said yesterday, the, the, you know, the, it's in our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. So what would you say to those individuals who are listening and they're saying, you know, I want to be that, I want to go there and I I know what I want. How do you stay true to the course? That's a great question. I think a lot of people, you know, and, and I don't, you're a teacher, you've seen so many people. Do you think any, everyone's even like capable of that? Like if you get someone who's really driven Right. And, and they want to be there. 
they're capable, but not everyone even has that. So like, so, so are you, are you even saying for those people that don't have that, or are you saying for the people that are really driven? Well, I guess there would be, you get into the, in the general fitness, you know, uh, behavior world and you have, you know, extrinsic motivation, in, well, intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation to go backwards and then a motivated. So you have the individuals who it's, ah, my, my mom's a PT, my uncle's a PT, my parents want me to become PTs, I wanted to be a PT, I don't know. So you have those individuals, or it's, no, I, I know I want to do it, but gosh, what what is it about, you, you know? So I guess it's, hey, either one, it's probably less hard to get the individual who's highly motivated, which most of the people who come to me for extra help, they're already getting an A, and it's like- yeah. You know, the, the, I'm sure the clients, is it, is it the, like when I, I've only been to a PT once in my life and it was for, you know, iliotibial band syndrome, things like that. And it's like, when I got there, they're like, all right, warm up on the stair master. And it's like, all right, what's like the highest number of flights of steps that you've seen someone like achieve? Cause how many minutes do I have to like achieve that stuff like that? So you have that individual and it's wonderful, but uh, if you're the other individual, who you're just not as driven, but you know, you want to do it. You know, you're in the trenches and you're just slucking through the mud, that individual, what do you say to them? That, that, cause that, yeah. I feel like that's most of my job. And, and, and for you guys, is that really a big part of your job? Both, you know, Joe, both as an owner and as a PT, it's trying to just, just, yeah. just trying to get someone to want to do it. That's such a tough question, man, because, uh, you know, I, I see this and this goes into you probably see it so much because you're a teacher. Like for me, I see it with my staff. Right. And one thing I'm trying to learn and do is what are their internal drivers? Like, because I think that really if, they, if they're not committed and if they're not bought in, like nothing else matters. So like you have to find their internal drivers and then match a modality of like treatment modality of teaching a modality of, of whatever to their driver. So let's say, for example, someone who this is, is extremely analytical and science-based and their mindset might need help. You can't go into that person and say, oh, you just got to be spiritual and open, and blah, blah, blah. You have to present science to them to say, this is actually why this works on a scientific level, because now you're tying something that works to the way they see the world. So I, that's such a hard question because like every single, you have to get to know every single person. I even say like with my staff, for example, and even, even my clients, the first three sessions is about building trust with my clients, right? My staff, the first three months is, is me seeing who they are. I can't even do anything until I know them for three months. And then I have to start implementing leadership strategies that are specific to them, you know, it's, and, and that's really what it comes down to. So if, it, if someone's really stuck in the, in the muck and there's, there's two rationale reasons for that. If someone really, if they want it, you gotta, you gotta magnify their want. Like, why do you really want this? Like you're, you're half-assing it. Like, it doesn't seem like you want it. Like you really even want this. You got, like, I would want to figure out like if they even want it. Cause if not, then you're just like, then, then don't do it. Like, stop wasting everyone's time in reality. And, but if they really truly want it, there's gotta be an internal driver that, that they can associate it with. Just like what Tyler was saying and, and what you guys were with Atomic Habits, right? That identity goal, like you have to help shift their identity. So that would, that would be how I would try to do it. And then I would just implement metrics for them if it was a staff or something like that. Do you have anything? I, I know, Tyler, you want to go. Do you have anything in your life? And Tyler kind of touched on it a little bit, but I turned 41 this past November. The previous, and I turned 40, I, want, I ran a 100-mile trail race. I really wanted to do it. And then for this random week, I just said, let me just listen to motivational messages and positive reinforcement, things like that. And it just, it changed who I was and I, I never turned it off. What do you have in your, in your daily life? I mean, kind of part of it's the environment. Yeah. You can put yourself when you get to a certain spot. Do you have any, I think Tyler might've said earlier, like affirmations, mantras, you know, post-its messages, it's, things like that. Do you have any of that? How important do you think that is? Or walk us through Iron Health. Do you have any of that yeah. in inside? Why, why do you make the environment and the, and the 
obviously you have tables, you have certain things that have to be set up. That's like the very, you know, cut and dry outside of that, what shapes, why you make the inside of iron health the way it is. Gotcha. So starting with myself, there's, there's things that I am extremely, extremely, um, I have to do every day. My morning routine to me is extremely powerful. I need to do it. One thing I started to do lately was as soon as I wake up, as soon as my feet touch the ground, you know, I will say, I, I will give myself a mantra like today's going to be a great day. I'm grateful for today. God bless me today. And I say that to myself out loud. So I, I, I'm creating that, that vibration already as soon as my feet touch the ground, especially in the morning, because, you know, that, that sleep state, you, your anxiety could be a little heightened. So that's the first thing I say to myself. After that, I really spend time on, um, you know, 20 minutes and I'm going to probably extend it where I'm actually doing a guided visualization meditation about how I want to feel. And I'm trying to embody that feeling just so I'm programming my mind for that. So those things for me are vital, you know, and then usually in the morning I'll, I'll read and I'll also like listen to a motivation thing in the morning or some someone on youtube or something that i like and that's kind of like my morning and then i go to work out or whatever i do and i need to do that every day because that sets the sets the stage like owning your morning to me is everything so that's that's really what i do personally for iron health it's you know we're at the point now we have like 30 30 people right so the things that i do are going to be affecting the top leadership team because I'm, I spent so much time with them in development. And then ideally that trickles down. Right. And I always say, I, I do something at the top. It doesn't shift to my C team, my, my C levels for three to four months, then until I repeat it 10,000 times, then it's in their head. And then it starts to go down the chain. So everything's like a, there's a lag to the way I'm shifting the way that the philosophy is, um, as far as like the, the layout and stuff goes, you know, we just have an open environment and just keeping the, 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 the energy open and making sure that it's open for everyone. So it feels open. Right. And that's, that's a caliber, but we set, we set certain metrics in place that there's coaching sessions embedded coaching and development sessions embedded throughout the week. Like I meet with my C levels once a week, you know, I have other every week, each office has a huddle where they're checking in on the week. It's coaching, it's development, seeing how we can help. So we're all pushing towards a, a, the same goal. It's really can, being a community is more important than being individuals and actually trying to hear people out is super important there. So that's, that's really how we set that up. And we also have like next week, I have a two days where a couple of the, my directors, my top leaders were meeting at my house and we're planning the year. So I bring them in and we literally sit down for two days and we're saying, what are we doing this year? What's happening? And it's interactive. It's fun. And then we bring that to the team. We close one day in February where we have a whole big team meeting where everyone gets to be interactive and we do something fun on those meetings and stuff like that. So for me, culture is everything. And, you know, it's you, I always say you want to be, if we're talking about the clinic, like I want a place that my mom can go to and, and I know she gets the best care. So that, that that's that's really how we we model that. Super powerful. It's so organized. I love it. It's come so far, man. I'm I'm so proud of you. But I think Thanks, to go man. back to just a, I know we're interviewing you, but to shed some light on the topic, like Pat, I know you're trying to for your students too because they listen to this. With PT school, I think the biggest thing, and I think I think Joe makes a good point about being driven. I think everyone has a reason, and you made a good point on like the external motivation, internal, and then the a motivation, like you said, like. I think everyone starts for a reason. And if that reason isn't something that's very powerful and like really resonates with you, like, I think like Joe said, like, you're going to fizzle out. Like when it gets hard, it's going to get hard for everybody. I mean, even like the, you know, close to 4 students in my cohort were, there was always times where they were super depressed, you know, felt like they had no life, had no free time. So you need to know what your why is. I know Joe, you talk about that a lot. Um, Pat, you talk about that too. Like if someone asks you on an elevator, like, you know, tell me who you are, tell me what your why is like, so to speak, like, what do you, What's your, you know, what, what do you value? Like Joe opened up with perfectly. Um, so making sure that, you know, your purpose, like why, what got you started, so to speak, always try and fall back onto that. And then just remembering, like, I know Joe always used to tell me too, and I worked with him, like, you, and that's like what got me into PT school, like working with Joe, like the whole mindset, like how strong physical therapy, it doesn't just change physically your being, but it's so much the biopsychosocial model of like you as a person, like it's just up leveling your life in so many different aspects. And like, he made the point about the surgeon, like, it's not just to go in and like, 
you know, carpentry work, like we're changing your lifestyle to be like a more fulfilled being and, and to understand that you're more capable and this isn't, you're not limited to your injury, so to speak. So basically to like tie back to that point, it's just to understand your why and to understand like, what, why are you doing this ultimately? Like, what's the job going to be like, you know, like the job's going to be awesome. School's going to suck. Like there's no way around that, but whatever setting you, you choose to work in, you know, that that job is going to be worth it. And you know, that the grind's going to be worth it. So if you can just believe in that. And I think the thing for me personally, that kept me going as well was that I always told myself, anyone can quit, but I'm not going to quit. Like I'm, you made the point about like, you know, uh, going on the ship to like, you know, across the sea and burning it once you get to the other side, like that's what I said. And I think it kind of resonates with me now thinking about like how you said you value your time. And once you really value your time, you're like, wow, I just put like, for me, like I had so many times where I almost, you know, bombed out. Like my first semester, I was like right on the cusp of like the minimum. And then the second semester, I was like right on the cusp of the 3.0. And you had to have a 3.0 after if you were on probation for the first time, you couldn't do it a subsequent time. You got a, you know, a one and done kind of thing. And I think I just live by that. Like, you made the point about people that get really good grades, like they come to you for help. Like I was getting good grades, like B plus in PT school is like an A plus in like undergrad. So, and I would always go for help because I was always like, I can get kicked out at any point in time. And it's probably like with you, with your company too, Joe, like at any moment now, like there's so much on the line with you, like at any point, like you can ruin your reputation. Like you've built such an amazing thing. Like you have to keep leveling up and growing. So I think the biggest thing is like valuing your time and knowing that you've put all this time into this. And if I give up right now and I quit, like, what was it all worth it for? You know? And that's like what kept me going. So if I could say anything to your students, it would be exactly that. Just think about all the time you put into this, why you started and like, what's the end result going to be? It's going to be awesome. So put your head down and just all you can do, like Joe said, a bunch of times is, you know, fall back and maybe do something else. If it doesn't work out, that's the worst case scenario, but just keep moving forward and do your best. That's like basically what kept me pushing to the end goal. So. Patrick, yeah. how many, what's your percentage of, of students that go to PT school, like usually in the year? Um, it, the amount, it's probably like 60%. A certain, certain cohort years, it might be 70%. And then throughout that, some, some will shift and things like that. But it's, I mean, it's a big, in the exercise science, exercise physiology, kinesiology, they're kind of all the same thing. A, a, yeah. a, a large majority generally want to go into PT school. That's the way I, I did my grad program at Rutgers. And I mean, they have a massive, you know, exercise science program and a, a massive amount, like over 75%, I think back then were PT. And if it's not, it's, they're going to go and become a strength coach, go into nursing, go into nutrition, go into, you know, a couple different things. But regardless, you're kind of, they're not all the same, but you're working with clients, you're working with individuals, you're trying to get them to change, you know, and a big part of your job as that practitioner. I mean, I was, you know, the head nutritionist for Rutgers football for many years. I consult, things like that. As a trainer, a big part of it is you know what to do and the client probably knows what to do and you can explain it to them very quickly how do you get them to continue to do it? And that's the same thing with, with your employees and things like that. And it's, and I think it's just, yeah, it, it's so powerful. And it's what hearing all the things that you're saying it, I mean, it's reinforcement for me. And that's why we love, you know, having you, you know, guests like you on and taking the time because it reinforces. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, I, I am doing things right. And I am thinking, you know, the right way. And, and I do want to continually strive forward. And I think your morning routine, you know, Ryan holiday, that's like his biggest thing. Uh, the daily stoic of first thing in the morning, don't he, for him, don't touch technology. And he has like 20 minutes of journaling and things like that, where mm -hmm. his, his, his juices flow. So it's those routines, Andrew Huberman right now, the, you know, neuroscience, he's all he talks about is the morning routine and things like that. I'm looking, my, my wife has this like UV light. Uh, so you have all of these things. And I think it's such a wonderful message and it's a wonderful pathway for people to follow um one one thing that uh, tyler and i were talking about and it's tyler touched on it before i always ask and i try and constantly think and i reshape it if you were in 
you want to become, you know, Iron Health, that household name. You want to eventually get 10, 11, and let's talk when you get to 10, and you're probably going to be like, yeah, let's make it bigger. So if you had, I, <laughs> I was thinking about that because it's, you know, certain, not, not everyone we're going to interview or we do interview uh, owns a business and, and has that type of, you know, vested interest. So if, if all of a sudden somebody came to you and said, you know what, I want to take Iron Health, I want it to become a global name, you know, even make it a, a, an American, you know, or then a global name. It's this big shot venture capitalist person who does all these things. What would you say to them? How would you, because now you're in a different perspective. It's how would you pitch them? How would yeah. you say in, 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 you're on the elevator. I always say it's the elevator pitch. How do you condense all your passion, all your drive, everything you want, you know, to do with Iron Health, and then all the things you can do with Iron Health as Iron Health. And then from there, Springboard, like you said, Iron Health doesn't define me. It's, it's a tool that I use to, 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 you know, wield who I am as a human being and, and touch others and help others. And think, how would you pitch that global? Yeah. You know, I, I really, I don't know if I would want to ever take it to that level, truthfully. Like once you, so my, my main job is really, as I evolve and this company evolves, my main job is to service my, my leaders and my directors, right? Like, like they're going to, they're going to have families. They're going to have people they have to take care of. I'm taking ownership to make sure that I'm not just building this to sell it. I tell them all the time, I'm not building this to sell it. If I wanted to do that, I would already sold it, you know? So if a venture capitalist came to me and wanted to take it to that level, I don't know if I would do it, honestly. Um, just because I've seen what happens to people who go that, that route. And it's very, it's very hard to balance out the way we deliver care and the way venture capitalists see business. And I don't think it would be a marriage to to for us honestly now if i was running something completely different that wasn't tied to the way i like like i'm so committed again like i'm so committed to my my staff and my leaders that like i want to make sure eventually when i build this thing and i want to exit i'm selling to them you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i don't i want to make sure they have they're set for the next whatever as many years as they want and then i'll just move on to something else and like if i if i was to to build a pt clinic that was like a boom, 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 bang it, bang it and shake it. it. It would be a completely different model where I would be in network, scale it, and then sell it to like an IV or something like that. You know, it's a completely different mindset. So that, so I don't know if that's a, a cop out to your, your question, but it's like, it's, it's a tough one because I've gone back and forth. I've had multiple people already approach me um, to try to purchase it. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm solid on, I love our community and our culture so much that I know that everyone that really rises up in the company has loves it as much as I do. So like, it would be a disservice for me to, to, to go behind their back and just steal, like move it from, from, from them, you know? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, 100%, I don't think it's a cop out. I think it's, <clears throat> I, th I think it's good because it's you, it, it's you being true to who you are. It's knowing that that's the, you we literally opened with this. And then when we gave you the mic, it's, you started with values, you know? And I mean, literally that's the name of our podcast, valued pursuit, like yeah. to know who you are and own up to it. Uh, I just read something the other day. It's like, you were, you were born an original, don't die a copy, you know, don't cop out you know, just because don't chase the dollar, uh, the one Jim Rohn, he says, you know, if, if, if I'm going to hand you a million dollars tomorrow, which I guess now that you're saying, um, we're saying that it would be that type of situation. You better learn how to be a millionaire. Otherwise you're going to lose yeah. that money, you know? So you have to then think you're, and you've, this is where it's great because it's, you obviously have thought about it and it's no, I know who I am. And, it gets to that level where no, that's, that's not what I want to pursue. And that could be a different life and things like that. It's like, well, yeah, there's could be a million different lives. So it's, it's, it's just wonderful to hear a response that it's just being true to who you are, you know? And, and yeah. I, cause I actually went on, there's a, I mean, there's a bunch of random it, videos and things like that. And I, I have something that you said in an interview and it said, you know, what, like what sets iron health apart? And you said, the truth is we care, calling Iron Health more of a recovery zone than a physical therapy clinic. And that's what makes a big difference. And you said, I want to build a place 
that my mom can go to, that my mom's friends can go to, that that, that you would, it's sort of the, the what do you, so reiterate that or expand upon that a tiny bit, because that was something that really stuck out when you said, here's the type of, because I asked you, what, what do you want? Why is Iron Health look the way it does? Why is it run the way it does? So that recovery zone. And again, if you can touch on why it's not just PT. So Iron mm-hmm. Health is more than just a PT clinic. As, it, as important, as crucial, and as wonderful as PT is. Or maybe you're yeah. redefining. Maybe Iron Health is redefining the PT field. Talk. I, I think that's. A, that? I think. I think that's. I think that's a wonderful word. The redefining is really what we're trying to do. You know, it's. It's. Uh, I sit here and like I'm. I'm extremely bu- business driven. I'm extremely business oriented, and I'm extremely business. Like I like to educate myself in business, and I. I can totally see what these other places do. And I understand from a business perspective, that's the, 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 the smartest and the quickest what path to revenue, right? So that's, that's an easy route, honestly, like you're selling, you grow, you sell, it's easy, it's easy. Like you just go in network, you take whatever you got, you grow to a point and you move. That is not gonna change the way PT is seen. It's not, you know, like, I have, this is a side note, but I do want to go down this path. Like you ever have an electrician come to your house? These fuckers charge 200, $250 an hour. And we give it to them like with nothing. Like, oh, here you go, an electrician. Now you ask a DPT or a physical therapist to say, hey, tell your client this, our service is 160 to 200 an hour. And they feel all icky about it. Like, dude, you guys are doctors. There's, just because we're in the medical field, and you think that as soon as it's medical, it's insurance. Like, no, you're not delivering the value that is required of us as being doctors. That's that's your responsibility to teach people that we are doctors. There's no reason why an electrician should be making more money than us. That's that's a side note. I go down that forever. But to shift the industry, it has to come from within. You know, you're always going to have these big monsters that are buying people up and they're doing whatever they have to do to make money, but for me and for for iron health i really want to make sure the standard is very different i want to create this brand that everyone who does come to like our social media or website they understand what we're about and we deliver value so then they know if they have pt they can choose us which might be a higher product but we're going to get them better faster and it's going to be a better environment and that in the grand scheme of things is where i want to continue to take this because you have to be just 10% better than the norm to, to be good. And I want to be a hundred percent better than the norm. So like the value we deliver is going to consistently grow. So it's all talk, you know, talk about the, the podcast title. It's all value, right? It's, it's, it's how you deliver value, how you propose the value and then getting your people to understand that. Yeah. We're value driven. And this is what we demand as being the best in the area, you know? So that's really where I, where I want to continue to evolve it. That's awesome, man. I love that. Um, I think the last one was just basically talking about, you know, getting to where you are right now. Uh, I think it was Simon Sinek who said it, like at what cost? Because there's always like the, you know, no matter what you do in life, there's always going to be like a downside to it, right? So like maybe you you have to put a little bit more time into this and it's delaying, you know, um, you wanted to start a family or whatever it is, or you, you know, when you, when you close on your house or whatever it is, maybe you wanted to do that a little sooner. So, you know, getting to where you are right now currently in your life at what cost and was the cost worth it? Yeah. I mean, that's for me, that's an easy yes. Right. Like, and I will still, I'm always going to have a grinding mentality and always like a, a growth facilitated mentality. And, and, and going back to before, like, I don't know if you could teach that, you know, like some people have it, some people don't, you could probably teach it to an extent, but you look at the top, top performers in the world, man, like, like again, a Musk, uh, Patrick, Bet David, like, I don't know if you guys know who that is. Mm-hmm. These guys are at, like an Ed Milet. These guys are at the pinnacle of, they could just sit back and, and be easy, but they're addicted to the process and they're addicted to that, that, that day one mentality. And I think that, that, that is something that is super important. So for me, I would risk it. I would do it all over again. And, and, and now as I get older, I'm like, when I was younger, you know, you have the, the more FOMO when you're older, you're like, no, this is fucking, this is the way I should have mm-hmm. been living the whole time. Like, this is the way it is, you know? So 
uh, 100%. Like you have to have that delayed gratification for, for something you want to achieve. And I think if I had to do it again, I would 100% relive that. And do you value like the person that you've become at this point in your life, like present day today, whatever day is the 20th, like, or 22nd, whatever. I don't even know what the date is or no 20th. It is the 20th. Um, like, do you value who Joseph Randina is today? All the skills, like all the stuff you've learned, like you said, you could do it all over again. Like Pat was saying before, if I gave you a million dollars tomorrow, well, you didn't learn how to be a millionaire. So you'd lose the money. Like people that win the lottery, it's the same kind of thing. Or, or like, are you more happy with like, what you've built you know like this this amazing thing like you're able to like take care of people help them take care of their families like help all of these people in like westchester new york like across like the you know northeast so like what do you value more is it is it the person you become or is it like the services that you're able to like render and um is do you still have that feeling i know you you talked about it before like you know you want to grow it to 10 clinics like does that ever does that ever shut off where you're just like take a second to be like present in the moment and be like wow this is crazy like the thought of like having the one spot in Briarcliff and now I'm opening up one like in Stanford I have four places they're all top notch you know what I mean like one-on-one care like they're to be honest like and I've been to a lot of PT clinics there's there's no place like Iron Health like you're you are changing the game so you know like the the first question again like you can go ahead and answer but like what do you value more the person you become or like basically what you've created or are they the same are they equal yeah i, I think I, I always have this conversation like obviously I, I surround myself with a lot of business owners um or i do a lot of business meetups and the the ultimate personal development path is owning your own business so it's very hard for me to separate the two because you are not going to get as many obstacles as you get when you own until you really like you can uh, you know listen this is my path but for me owning my business has really facilitated me growing as a person so they, they kind of go hand in hand so that is extremely valuable and i right now currently value my, myself and i i make sure i have a lot of uh, grateful practices where i'm spending time and and having gratitude and making sure i'm I'm reflecting on that because that's what, what keeps you happy. Like it literally changes your, your state. And what I've noticed in the past and what, I, and for things that have stole my joy or stole things that like how I felt about myself are, is when I start comparing to other people as well. You know, everyone has a different journey and the comparison really steals it from you if, if you do that. So I value who I am as a person and I'm growing to the point where I'm not comparing myself to where someone else is because what I have done is my path and what makes me happy and, and has facilitated my growth. And do you feel, do you feel like you're able to be a little bit more present now about it? Like, you know, look what you've built, like, you know, let me take a second to be, you know, shut off the, all right, what's the next step? What, you know, what are the next goals? You know, what's the, what are the goals for this week, next month, you know, next couple months, year, so on and so forth. Like, are you able to now better than you were before? Maybe like when you were 25, you're in your thirties now. So you think you, are, do you do a better job with that now being present, being grateful? Yeah, I think, I think, I think being grateful more than, you know, I'm, I always try to be present, right? I'm even present in the chaos. Being grateful has really been a shift I've, as I gotten older, I've become more grateful with the situation. I don't want to put presence with being stagnant because I'm, like I said before, I'm addicted to the journey. So for me, it is always going to be, all right, what else do we got to do? What, what are we fixing? What's, what are we fixing next? You know, like that's literally the mindset and that's, and I, I love that I'm present in that, but being grateful has really shifted as I gotten older because that has what has what really facilitated a change in my body and my being and my feeling. Yeah. I was thinking of, I don't know if it's the Lao Tzu or Confucius for Tyler, what you were asking. And then Joe, based on your response, a big part was, I mean, I can say as someone who's, I've been, this is my 10th year of full-time teaching. I taught for seven years in grad school. I've been an athlete my whole life. You know, I've been a, a, a I would consider myself an entrepreneur, things like that. But there's a, a really good quote that says to gain knowledge, you have to add something every day, but to gain wisdom, you have to take away something every day. So it sounds like Joe, a big part of what you, what came out, what I was hearing as Tyler was saying, have you, are, are you able to stop and take 
more of a, a a presence and an awareness than now than you were when you first started. And, and to me, it kind of sounds like that as you've become wiser, which obviously it sounds like you have, it's, it's easier because you take on more responsibility, but you've gotten to a point where over time you, like you said, you realize, Hey, when you're, when you're, you know, this, this too shall pass is what you learn when you're older. And it's, you just slowly learn to just start to slowly cut away all those little things that just pull you down, you know, and then it's for me, it's much easier to then be grateful for those wonderful, because then you see what you have left. And those are the wonderful things that help build you up and help drive you and, and give you that purpose. And, and, you know, are the values and, and the valuables that you are pursuing in life. So um, you know, I, I'm, I'm so grateful to, to have you on. It's wonderful to hear of inspirational, you know, just examples like you, but to then actually get to engage in conversation on platforms like this and to be able to, to share your words, your story, you know, your uh, motivation, you know, with our viewers is, is wonderful. So I want to say thank you for taking the time and, any any parting words that you would want to give about iron health about yeah so thank you guys this was this was really good it's going to be a, a good show I, I appreciate it so a couple things uh for iron health if you guys want to learn more you want to you know if you're in pt school you want to do rotations we're taking some students for learning check us out at powered by iron health is like our social and stuff like that um one parting word that i've been playing with that that i'm trying to instill in my life is um you have to make sure that you are just disciplined right like just discipline yourself and and be repetitive like motivation is going to be very very flashy but it's going to go away you gotta you gotta discipline consistently because that's really what is what's going to change things in any everything you do so Love that, man. Super powerful. Thank you so much for coming on, giving us your time. Like you said, I know you value that. We value it. So we really appreciate you going over a little bit of what we had scheduled. So I know there's a lot of awesome stuff in here and uh, looking forward to doing some more stuff together in the future. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, guys. Patrick, nice to meet you. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Joe. Yeah. Enjoy. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Pleasure. Take care, man. Bye. All right. Thanks for listening. Just by being here, you've already made a step in the process of growth. As John Maxwell said, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. We are excited for what is to come with more awesome guests, more content on our expertise. But we want to ask you guys, what are you interested in learning more about? If you could post your comments below. We hope you're enjoying this experience of a valued pursuit in life. And if you are enjoying it, don't be afraid to hit that like button and consider subscribing, maybe sharing the video with someone that you think could gain value from it. Ultimately, our mission is to grow so we can continue to bring on valuable guests, provide content on topics of relevance to your life, and grow the show across the globe. What's up, guys? It's Tyler from Reinventco. We released some new merchandise, part of our standard tea collection. We got two colorways. I'm currently wearing the dark heather gray. We also have a cardinal red. Uh, they're fitted, they're super high quality. We've got the nice reinvent logo on the front. We got a quote on the back, a lifestyle of continued growth. Um, I'm 195 pounds, six foot, so I'm wearing a large. We got small, medium, large, and XL. These are one of one. They're going really quick. We've had a lot of support. We want to say that we'd appreciate that and appreciate the belief in this company. Get them while you can. Uh, they're $30 local pickup, Westchester, New York, and uh, $35 shipped to you. Join the movement.